anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Alan. He has some good information to share. All right. First time to speak to a group of master gardeners, and I am quite nervous. <laughs> I, I don't, I do, a, I, I think I do a decent job behind the camera. I just, I, when, I, when I turn the camera around on me, which is not very often, I just, uh, uh, uh. We can turn the camera around. <laughs> you know, we might do that in a minute. <laughs> but I just, uh, I, when she contacted me last year, Brenda contacted me last year to, to come do this, and I said, in my head, didn't tell her this, but in my head I thought, what in the world have I got to say to a bunch of master gardeners? I, you know, I'm a hack. Consider myself a hack. I'm a professional hack. I'm good at it. But, oh, but anyway, so uh, let me t just quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in East Texas uh, and a uh, city boy all my life till about 28. We moved out in the country, got about 17 acres and been out there uh, well over 40 years. And uh, learned a lot about homesteading, everything that goes with it, with livestock and stuff, building fence and um, fixing this and that, and uh, shearing sheep's hooves and uh, messing with cows and, and all that. And uh, just, I got to looking at YouTube. YouTube came along long after I moved out there, but got to looking at YouTube and I thought, you know, I, I can do that or I'd watch a video. I knew that. Uh, I'd watch a video and that's okay, but there's a better way to do that. So anyway, I had two girls, two girls do not, you don't hand that down, down generationally, that kind of uh, knowledge down generationally if you got daughters, as a general rule, as a general rule. Uh, so anyway, I thought, well, I just, I, I've got 40 years of something. It may not be worth anything, but 40 years of, of knowledge of homestead and stuff, and I'd like to be able to share it with somebody. So, uh, so I started a YouTube channel and and you know, just first first time I got I hit 200 subscribers, I was just 200 people out there care what I've got to say. I mean, that was just amazing to me. So anyway, the rest is history. Uh, I've got I've got about 130,000 subscribers now and 35 million views, and it's just it's gone crazier than I ever thought it would, and and I'm humbled by it. Uh, but anyway, I've, with, with the homesteading, with my channel, it's, uh, it covers, um, again, livestock. Um, I've got a few notes as long as my phone doesn't die, we'll keep going. Uh, livestock, emergency preparedness, you know, food storage. That, of course, includes growing food, but uh, food storage also. Um, uh, like solar things, battery banks, things like that. Uh, my focus in the last few years has really been on blackberries, and I'm, I'm not necessarily going to cover blackberries per se t today, but if, if you've got any questions about them, then we can go in that. Um, blackberries, fruit, fruit trees, gardening, raised beds. I garden in raised beds. Uh, I garden in containers, uh, uh, earth bags, or, or uh, uh, whatever. And also, uh, back to Eden. Did anybody do back to Eden? Has ever done back to Eden? Okay. It, I use it now to build my soil. I don't, I don't use it uh, as a gardening method, but I'll put a layer of wood chips on two feet deep on a, on a plot and leave it there for two or three years, and it's just black compost underneath it when you're done. It doesn't take as long as you would think. So I love wood chips. I love put, putting a covering on and, and, um, and building my soil because I am in red, red clay. Uh, I mean, hard red clay. So the difference is, and what I'm mainly going to talk to you about today is, is container gardening. Some of you already do that, I think. Um, and I've got three different uh, examples here of uh, the containers that I use. And that would be a wicking tub, and it comes in several colors. I prefer the hillbilly blue. I mean, that's just, I think it's just beautiful out there on the landscape to have that blue. You know, blue tarps, is, if it's a, when you say blue tarp, you think, that's just beautiful. So, uh, but it comes in uh, many different colors and, and uh, sizes. Most of them are about the same, but, um, but they, the, each, each company manufactures their tubs a little bit different. I was just telling uh, somebody a while ago that I've got some orange ones that I'm probably going to transfer all my blackberries to because I've got a, a tear, a rip uh, in one of my blue ones. And these are just pretty thin. And the orange ones are just twice as thick, at least. I mean, just they're heavy. They're, you can just feel the difference. So I'm probably going to, because 
there's a longevity on tubs. Um, I don't know what it is, but I would say five to seven years maybe on, on a, a syrup tub or a, a mineral tub or a protein tub is what these are. And uh, after that, especially with something like blackberries that, that gets so root bound, and I mean, it's just, the, 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 I, I don't know whether the expansion of the root caused it or whether the heat, we had such a hot summer, uh, maybe that did it, or whether it's just, it's time, you know, they've got a, a, a lifespan. <clears throat> but uh, what I do, uh, I just follow a guy that, uh, that kind of started this. Earthbox really started the wicking, uh, wicking type. Uh, as far as I know, Earthbox started the wicking type uh, container. And it just basically, there's a reservoir at the bottom of these containers, uh, these two containers. And um, you, wicking tubs uh, depends on what size pipe you put in it. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But if you put a, a four inch pipe in it, you drill a hole at three inches and you've got three inches of water, res water reservoir at the bottom of it. If you put a six inch pipe, you drill your hole at five inches. So you've got, you know, you, you've got a five inch hole here, which means you've got a lot deeper water reservoir. Six inches is hard to find. It's about twice as expensive as four inch. So I never, I never got the six inch. Um, and the earth box, same thing, about two and a half to three inches of water in the bottom of it when it's full and it's got to overflow. You can't overwater either one of these containers. You can have a huge rain and it's not going to overwater. The, the, the excess water is going to come out the, the weep holes. In fact, that's why the earth box was invented by a man named Blake Wisenhunt in Florida. Big tomato farmer, acres and acres and acres of tomatoes. And uh, one of the hurricanes came through, I think, in the 90s and just completely wiped him out. So he said, there's got to be another way, got to be a better way to... Um, because he, he knew that wasn't the last hurricane Florida was going to get. So he said, we gotta, we got to come up with something. So he, he worked with uh, one of the universities in Florida, uh, probably the Ag Department, and, and developed the Earth Box. And uh, he's got, they've, I've seen one video of, of the, he's, he's passed away now, but one video of his farm, and it's just hundreds and hundreds of Earth Boxes. They grow tomatoes in them every year, no crop rotation. There's no, I, I, you know, good, bad, I don't know. He says you don't have to do it. Um, so there's no, there's no, there's no crop rotation. And he said instantly, and this is a guy doing the video. This guy says instantly we're organic. He said, the other, it, you know, anybody here organic certified kind of yeah. trying, whatever. I wish I could be, but East Texas bugs are just, they don't understand organics. <laughs> uh, but this, you know, he said it takes, I don't know, two to two to three years, I think to become certified organic. And he said, when you use organic soil, organic fertilizer, and, you know, all this stuff in an organic, in, in a, an earth box, or I guess even a wicking tub. And he said, you're just immediately or, organic. They, I don't know whether there's a, some kind of inspection they do or whatever. He said, but he said, it's just, it's, it's, it's immediate. Another reason he did that, because I think he is organic. So, uh, but anyway, he came up with this uh, earth box with the water wicking up through the material. This is, this guy has to be a... a a material that's got um, peat in it, quite a bit of peat in it. My mix, I think, has 50 or 60 percent peat. Uh, I think Earthbox actually recommends 60 to 70 percent peat. So you can't just put dirt in it. The a wicking type uh, container. It has to it has to have that peat in it, and, and of course, a, 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 a um, potting mix has uh, perlite or uh, some other substance in it that will hold water as it wicks through. So, uh, but anyway, that's why that was invented. Mr. Leon up in Oklahoma came up with uh, the same idea, but cheaper, and that's using a wicking tub, using a, a syrup tub or a protein tub. If there's any cattlemen, you know, they know they've got some of these right now that, they're, that the cows are through with and can get some of these. Just ask anybody you know that's got cows. Uh, ask, uh, go to a feed store and, and get him to, uh, I got a bunch of my, especially those nice thick orange ones from the feed store uh, near me. And, uh, but I, and I didn't bring all the things I need to build one of these and show you. Uh, I've got some good videos on that and I do have cards in the back. It's got my website on it, YouTube channel on it, and my email on it. But uh, what you'll do for the wicking tub is come in here and you lay, there's several ways to do it. Lay three in here, 
uh, these one short one here, a longer one in the middle. Try to try to fill up the the middle of the bottom of that tub. Rather, uh, you want about um, eighty five percent of the tub uh, full. You don't want you you don't want the water. Not making sense. I don't think. When you when you put this in there, you're either going to use uh, just like this, or you're going to use some that have a sock on it. That's what they call a sock, or at least I call it a sock. It comes from the from Lowe's or whatever with the with the bag on it. It's a French drain, and so I I will take that and either uh, just take and pull the sock out, put a tie wrap on it, uh, cable tie on it, and just make a self-contained piece of pipe. You can't let the dirt potting mix get in these pipes that's the that's the main thing so you have to keep the potting mix out of these pipes so i'll put uh, i'll either put three in there like that either with socks or i'll twist one around uh, and do a do a spiral that's one way to do it i can't tell you what um how many inches to cut or whatever because each again each tub is is kind of different um but uh that gives you just small spaces between the cracks here where you can, where there's going to be uh, water contacting the, the basically the bottom of this tub. And if you use these without um, without a sock on it, just, just using this by itself, it does not have to be per perforated, by the way, then you'll need to put a layer of landscape cloth on top. That's to keep the dirt out, keep the potting mix out. Again, it's not a great demonstration because I just didn't have all the things necessary for this. Um, but you, and then as you, before you put the potting mix in it, you ran your, run your hands down in there and make sure that some of that, um, you, you got your pipes in here like this, some of that uh, potting mix goes all the way down to the bottom. You're, you're, you're pushing your cloth down, which makes the, you're packing your potting soil, potting mix in there to where it, where it goes down in there. And it's reaching the bottom, that's your wick. That's where it starts to wick from. Uh, Earth, Earth Box does it a little bit differently. They've got a, um, they've got a, these are called whales. These two things on the, get over here. These two th things right here, it's called a well. And that's where, that's where it wicks from in an Earth Box. This comes, Earth Box by far is the easiest way to get into container garden or wicking type gardening. Um, And that's because all you do is when it comes in the mail, you look at it and you say, that's cool. You put that in there. There's no landscape cloth. And then you put the, the pipe in there and that's your watering pipe. It comes with two bonnets. Uh, one of the things about a wicking tub or an earth box that you don't do with a wicking tub, but can, is, put, is cover it with a bonnet. Uh, basically, you've got your your whole and that that keeps the that keeps the um, weed seeds out keeps the water out and you say why do you want to keep the water out because you've you've put in there enough fer fertilizer to do one season not one year but one season so if you do fall gardening you'll have to refertilize but uh, if, if it rained on it and water ran through it, it's gonna run some of that fertilizer out the weep hole, which is right there. That's your weep hole. And it's gonna run that through there and you're gonna lose some of your fertilizer. So they put the, the top on it for uh, water retention, weed uh, suppression, as well as uh, fertilizer re retention also. So anyway, and again, the, the pipe goes through there and go, they've got holes punched in it already for the pipe and stuff. Uh, so that's the easiest way to get into it is an earth box. Earth boxes, I paid about $25, $26 for a bunch of earth boxes. Uh, I had free shipping. It was Christmas about two years ago and they put them on sale and had free shipping. They must have been hurting or something like that. And I bought a bunch of them. Now they're 35-ish and you can go up to $100 a piece if you get casters on them and you buy the potting mix with it and you buy the fertilizer with it and all that stuff. I just always buy just the earth box and it comes with the bonnets, comes with the pipe, comes with everything you need. Uh, this is probably the next uh, expensive. It depends on whether you have to buy your tubs or whether you, uh, someone gives you tubs. If you can find a farmer that can give you these tubs. 
this, uh, this pipe probably, I think with a 10 foot piece, which used to cost about $10. I haven't priced it since, since all the prices went crazy. But uh, you, you could do two tubs, maybe three, with a $10 piece. I'm going, I'm going to say five, probably more than that now, but around $5 for the pipe to go in this. And then uh, as far as the cover, I've seen, I haven't done it, but I've seen people take a, a grocery bag. I would use white in East Texas just because of the heat, not black. But take a grocery bag after you've planted or before you plant, take a grocery bag, put a, a bungee around it or a, some uh, baling uh, twine around it or something like that. And then you've got basically a cover, a bonnet for your uh, wicking tub like others do for, or like the earth box is designed to do. Punch a hole, cut an X, whatever, and plant your tomato in it, pepper, whatever. <clears throat> uh, the, the difference between the two as far as production, uh, it's about the same it, except Earthbox says you can plant two, two tomatoes, six peppers, six, no, eight or ten okra. And I didn't believe it, so I planted eight or ten okra in it. And I had okra that big around, had ten of them in this thing. I mean, just huge, six or eight feet tall, just huge. Couldn't believe it. And um, so it worked. Now, you also say you can put like 16 corn in it, 16 corn seeds in it. It's... It's really an amazing thing if, if you don't mind spending some money on it. This would be the next cheapest way, and you might have $20, $10, $15 in the, um, the physical apparatus here, and then you got to fill it up with, with potting mix. Potting mix has gone up. So the, the, by far the cheapest way to garden, and most of you do that, and I do that also with corn, peas, onions, things like that, would be in the soil. You know, it's much, much cheaper than doing this because with this, with these two things, you have to purchase some, uh, some type of potting mix. Uh, again, soil, just garden soil, even yours may be great. Unless it's got a lot of peat in it, it's just not going to work. It's not going to wick. Um, so this is, you know, you can get in uh, for $10 if you can find them cheap or free. Uh, and then, you, but you're going to put a, a a three cubic foot bag of potting mix in it, which used to be $11, and I think now it's 14 or more where I get it. Um, so, but it's gonna last you, it's not something you have to replace every year. It's gonna last you for several, several years. Um, you can, you know, you, as it com compacts, and it will, uh, put compost on top or, or wood chips on top and let them compost, whatever. And that way you're replenishing your soil, but, but you're not spending any more money on soil. Um, I, again, I know I didn't do justice as far as how to build this thing, except, uh, but I've got, I've got detailed videos on how to do that on the, on the website. Yes, sir. Is, is I understand that your tubing in there has socks on the end of it and is empty, mm -hmm. and then it fills with water. Mm -hmm. If they, if, you know, again, if you use socks, you don't have to use hard, uh, hardware cloth, uh, landscape cloth on top. You don't have to use that. They, all you're trying to do is keep the dirt out of those pipes. Okay. And with the socks, socks do that. Uh, and that's, I, 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 nobody, I hadn't, hadn't, didn't see anybody doing that. So I did a video and I just called it my hybrid wicking tubs. And I used the socks and everything and I really like it. Now what I did do uh, is come in here, drill a hole in one of these put a pipe in it because you got to have a fill tube and I think you probably didn't I didn't have to but I didn't I was it was it was a preliminary and so I, I put a drilled a hole in it and ran a pipe through it brought my sock up put a tie wrap on that tie wrap the ends and everything just made it a, basically a snorkel almost you know like this I don't think you necessarily have to do that because that water you'd be surprised how quickly that water gets to the rest of the the area you, you may you may have it um, the either one of these in there spiraled around or three of these uh, in there with socks on them whatever but once you start watering they fill up quick because it starts coming out of that weep hole real quick and you know those those pipes are are full yes Hole, you said one inch above the top above of the, the pipe. You use six inch pipe, you'll, you'll drill your hole at five inches. You want a one inch air space for, the, for those roots to come down and air prune in that, in that one inch space. And they'll come down, hit that hardware cloth or hit those 
uh, that, those socks or whatever, and they just stop. You know, they'll, they'll penetrate a little bit. I pulled a, a tree, a, a fruit tree, and I've done fruit trees in these, and I've got a bunch of blackberries in these. Uh, and I, I pulled a tree out, a couple of trees out, and was going to plant them in the soil. And they, the roots had, you know, when I pulled them out, the, the pipes came out with it. It was just a matter of kind of tearing, it, tearing the roots off of it because they do penetrate some, but not, not all the way. And that's what you're doing. You want that, that air pruning spare, air space to, for your roots to come down and hit that. They don't, roots don't grow, grow into air as a general rule. So they go down there and hit that and they stop. Otherwise, you know, if you didn't have that, they'd go down that water and it'd, it'd clog up your pipes with, with roots, you know. Um, yes? I don't quite understand that because any time you hit air, that stops the wicking process. Well, you're, you're, but you've got some of your soil that's, that's, your soil is not just stopping at that right there. Some of your soil is going down in there. This, this doesn't, these pipes don't cover the entirety of the bottom of that. There's, there's, there's places you can see blue. In other words, what I'm saying, that's where your soil goes all the way down to the bottom. And you want that to be about 15%. You want about 80, 85% of the bottom of this to be covered with your pipes. And then between those pipes, if you lay them in there sideways, between those pipes, they don't, they don't fit together tight. They don't fit up against that round thing tight. There's going to be a hole here. And that's where your soil goes down in, and it, and it, it stays out of your pipes. You try to keep it out of your pipes, but if you've got a, a landscape cloth on top, you push that down in there. Again, I've got some good videos on that, just... Uh, just shoving that soil down in there, making yourself a well, basically like the earth box got those wells. And then that's where it starts to wick up. Yeah, if, you, if your soil just sat on top, then no, it's not going to go anywhere. You have to, you have to take that, that landscape cloth and, and push that stuff down in there. Now, if you're using socks, you don't. The soil is just going to so fall beside that, and you don't have to worry about it. Pack it down. You want it, you want it tight. You want it packed down in there, but, but it'll, it'll, it'll get down there. Yes? Three is what I buy. And one of those, you mix it with, uh, it's 60% or 50% peat moss. Mm -hmm. And you mix that with your potting soil or andro or whatever. That's, I just use straight. That's what I use. Whatever I buy is, is, is what goes in. I use BM7. I get it up the road at Hughes okay. on 69 between Bullard and Tyler. That's, that's the peat moss? That's, that's, a, that's the BM7 is... They've got a BM6, which is mainly, mostly peat moss, but BM7 is, is peat, it's uh, mulch, pine bark mulch, I think some in it. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not real chunky, it's, okay. it's, but, but mostly peat, and it's got some uh, perlite, uh, what's the other white stuff, perlite and what? Vermiculite. Vermiculite, okay, I'm trying to think. That's what, you use, just, that's that's what, what I use straight, just okay, dump it in, plant there. Your plant in there. Plant it in there. Okay, so, uh, okay, so three cubic feet, mm -hmm. that would Say blue tubs. About two cubic feet. I think Earthbark says two cubic feet for that. I found this to be about the same. If you use six inch pipe, you're going to raise it up a little bit and yeah. probably won't quite use two cubic feet, but two to two and a half cubic feet for a wicking tub. You can kind of uh, rely on that. With an earth box, you use two cubic feet because when, when you, when they, uh, when you, when you fill it up with soil, you level it out, you cut a little row with your hand, just come and come in like that, or with a trowel, and you put your fertilizer in it, and then you, they've got different ways to plant. And with a tomato you plant, you do your fertilizer on one side, and you put tomatoes on the other side with things that you do more than two in. You'll put your fertilizer down the middle, and you'll plant on either side of it. Uh, the, the guy that designed these said he's put five pounds of fertilizer in before and never burned one up. He said, you, you know, people, people think you're supposed to put one pound of fertilizer. He said, but I have tested and tested and tested just to see what it, what it would take. And he said, he, he talked about water flow. And, you know, once you, once you water it, there's a, there's a flow of water and the roots come to the, uh, to the fertilizer but won't go any further. I, it was very interesting. I just, I don't, I don't understand all I know about it. You use water-soluble fertilizer. I use... Initial planting, I always use, um, if, it's a, if it's a blooming type plant, tomatoes, peppers, things like that, I use 10-20-10. Um, 
uh, unless it's organic. I've got an organic I get from Haas Tools. That's five four three. And it's a liquid. No, it's this is all granular. Oh, granular. And then they sell a twenty twenty twenty. That's. I I do on the, on the other box. Like I say, you you cut a groove. Uh, if you're going to put your plants on one side, you cut a groove, put your fertilizer in there, and cover it up. And I meant to say a while ago, and I'll go ahead and say it now quickly, and hopefully I'll come back to that without a memory lapse. Also, Earthbox, they want you to mound it up. If it wasn't for the mound, you could probably get away with less than two cubic feet, but they want it mounded up to shed the water, to give uh, more area for, I don't know what they want, but the, the, you're supposed to round them up. So that Earthbox won't look like that flat. It will look, you know, it'll have a mound on top. It'll be cone-shaped on top. Uh, with, the, with the wicking tubs, Fill it up with potting mix, you know, build it, do everything you need to do inside it. Fill it up with potting mix, and then I come in here on the, on the outside, and I'll just pull the, pull the dirt away from the outside, and I'll put a pound of fertilizer. Now, I should have said, I mix uh, earth box, this, whatever, I mix a pound of lime, too. Uh, a pound of lime. Do you want to get that pH? Um, most potting mix, well, peat, I think, uh, pH is five, five and a half, something like that. So you want to bump it up. So I use a pound of, uh, when it's about half full, then I'll put a, a pound, dust a pound of, um, of lime in there, mix it up good, and then I bring it up the rest of the way, you know, mix it up all the way till you get to the top. And then at the top, I'll cut a ring an inch deep, two inches deep, whatever, around the, around the edge, because if I'm going to plant right in the middle, that keeps it far away from those roots. And, uh, and then I'll put a pound of fertilizer. So I put, got a pound of lime, pound of fertilizer in it, and I just do that. Now, during the year, I'll either come back in, I was telling him, on my blackberries, especially um, when I see they look like they could use a little something, I'll come in here with a, about a tablespoon of uh, probably a triple 13, because they're, they're, later in the year, they're not typically blooming. Some of them will, the primacanes will, but. And I'll put a, a tablespoon of fertilizer in three or four places. Just kind of dig a hole, and it's root bound as it can be. Somebody's going to ask me, right, do they get root bound? Yeah, but I don't think it. They they propagate from the roots. They pop up from the roots. The canes, new canes, are going to pop up from roots. So I don't know that root bound is a problem. I don't know. Might have been in tubs for four years. So they're going up. I'm going in going in my fourth year. Uh, but anyway, put that fertilizer in, and then I cover up. I always cover up the fertilizer, and then pop you a, a plant in it. The the as far as production, I've, I've, I've grown two. The guy that designed this is one, one tomato. But I put two in it. I didn't, I didn't see any reason you couldn't put two. Uh, it, it, they did well. Earthbox does too, and I'm talking about tomatoes. Um, I don't know that I've put peppers in a, earth, in a, a wicking tub. I think mostly tomatoes. Um, but they just, they do great. They, you know, now last year, last summer, I don't know whether everybody was like me, but last summer, man, I didn't. All my stuff did horrible. That height, that heat, heat wave we had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Covers. How does the plant get through the covers? Yeah, you just come in here. You just, after you get it done, you've got it mounded up like this. If you're going to plant seed, you just cut a little X, and then come, just drop your seed, and then pinch your soil over the top of it, or throw some, throw some, some more potting mix over the top of it. But you've got little X's. If you're planting a big, a big tomato plant, sometimes, you know, I've got a big one. It's in a solo cup or something like that, and you have to put a, cut a pretty big X in it, and then just push it through. Get down in there and dig your hole out. Push the plant in, and then, uh, and then just cover it up best you can. You know, sometimes you have to reach in there and cover it up, or just get some more potting mix and pour over the top of it. But it's got, you know, that's what you you've got to cut a hole in it. But that's yeah, a yeah, <clears throat> yes. Or you could just. If you're using the tub, you could use a mulch, right? Yeah, and I do that. Uh, I've done that on blackberries, and I've done I've done it with with vegetables too. But yeah, a mulch on top, uh, and it cuts down the weeds. And and you know, I was going to talk about the advantages and the pros and cons of of container gardening. This is it is expensive, uh, you know, it's compared to gardening in the soil. Gardening in soil is the cheapest thing you can do. Not cheap necessarily, but cheap is a whole lot cheaper than this, and that's because of the the parts that go into this and the soil that you have to you don't just throw dirt in it. You have to you know buy some manufactured soil, or manufacture it yourself. Go down and mix your own, get some peat, and get some this and that, and, and make your own. Uh, so it's 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 more expensive to do it this way, 
But the soil lasts for a long, long time. I, I would think six, seven, eight, ten years maybe. You might have, you know, you're going to amend it with compost and, and maybe dig in some, uh, if it's blackberries, you're not going to dig in a whole lot because it's, those, it's full. It's full of roots. You can scratch around and get down a little bit, but, uh, but if it's a vegetable or something like that, you're going to pull that vegetable out anyway, and you're going to lose some of the soil. So you're going to re-amend from time to time. But, um, uh, but you can, I haven't covered mine, I don't think, I don't remember doing it, uh, but covering it with a, a white trash sack, if you can find a big white trash sack and, and could cover it, that would be the same, basically. And you might want to mound it, I don't know, or at least not have it concave in the middle where the, all the water would run down to your plant. Uh, have it you know, concaved a little bit on top, like you do with an earth box, to, so you can have some runoff. So the, yeah. the, uh, uh, in the past, I just saw I saw the uh, the wicking container simply as a water conservation system. But what you're telling me now is that not only does it conserve water, but it keeps keeps uh, keeps your plants from being drowned when in a rain event or, or yeah. heavy rain. Period. I mean, I've lost. Either, either to either to washing and my, my land is it's not terribly sloped but it's it's everything i don't think there's a level place out there and uh you know you plant a row of corn and it's coming up and it looks good and it's like that and you get a rain it just washes out two or three sections of the, your rows and uh you're just not gonna have that with this now one reason i plant most of my corn now in raised beds they just don't what it doesn't wash uh <clears throat> But yeah, it, it keeps it from keeps it from washing, and if you don't have a cover on it, cultivation on one of these is really you just walk up there and you do this, and you throw it out. It's just you know I'm I'm a uh, house tools is a sponsor of my channel. I don't know if anybody's got the house wheel hoe and stuff. Just marvelous tools, excellent tools. But um, I don't have to wheel hoe any of these. They just they won't take a wheel hoe real well. You, you go around in circles and you know. <clears throat> so it's just easy to do. Now the third <clears throat> third method, and by far the cheapest method, is grow bags. And I've I've done a lot of things in grow bags. Tomatoes do great. Tomatoes, peppers do great in grow bags. These use the same principle in that. Uh, and this is I think a, it doesn't look like a ten gallon. I've got some ten gallons, but I don't. That doesn't look. That looks like maybe a seven. Um, same principle as far as your uh, root pruning. In a grow bag, your, your roots come out, they, they fill up the container, and then they start trying to go out, and they hit the, they hit the air and they stop. So just root every, uh, the whole sides of these just root prunes all your roots. And when a, when a, when a y- y- y'all know about pruning, when you prune a branch, it's going to go crazy, sending out shoots and laterals and this and that. Same way with the root. You prune that root off, and it's, it's going to start, uh-oh, we, we had to stop here. We better make some more roots, and it, it, it does that. And so this, with the exception of the, the soil you have to put in it, but I haven't done it, but I would imagine if you've got some good soil that you've uh, built up over the years, since this doesn't wick, I don't see any reason you couldn't use just a good garden soil in these. Uh, which would be cheaper probably, if, especially if you make your own. If you make your own compost or a mushroom compost or something like that, it th- would work well, I, th- I think. Never done it. I, I just always pour uh, potting mix in it. But I don't know any reason why it wouldn't because it's not wicking. These two things, you have to have the peat to, put the peat to make it wick. You don't with this. Uh, I, I, now, I put these in, in a, a catchment uh, tray of some sort it can be a like the round thing that uh, all pan all drain thing they used to know those plastic ones i think walmart sells them for three or four dollars i don't have any of those but some, some people have suggested that i've got some fiberglass tubs that i got years ago at a uh, company was giving them away and i just i set two of them down in each one of those and it i've got a hole drilled inside at about two inches so even if i get a hard rain at two inches it it all flows out so that that bag should never be more than two inches of water in it and so you're not going to flood out there the, the tubs are about six inches so i could float them out if i wasn't careful and i have that's why i drilled holes in them so but this is probably the cheapest way of container gardening but yes why do you put it in the trays uh, if when you water one of these it's yeah it's a great way to plant but when you water one of these it goes down it goes whoop it just drains out. So you're just holding water. It's just a water cons- conservation water. Um, you're not wasting as much water. It also 
it gives it, it, it does kind of wick in a sense because you're, you're putting water, you've got water in the bottom. If you've, you know, if you've got the, a, a tray two inches deep, then you've got two inches of water after a rain or after you come and water it. You can water it on top, you can water the pan, and it will wick up some. I don't think it's going to wick you know, like something would with peat in it, but, um, but it, it's done great. I've raised some nice, nice tomatoes in these things. I have some big, huge tomato plants. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> B B M seven is the company's Fayford F uh, or Fafard or something F A F A R D. Okay. Or no, that's another one. It's B M seven. B M seven. Bruger Bruger Maybe that's. It. Last I bought was like fourteen bucks. Used to be eleven bucks when I first started this. Ten or eleven bucks. Now it's fourteen bucks. I think. Uh, so filling up one of these things, don't know what it's going to cost you to build it. Don't know whether you have to buy one or get one from a cattle guy, but it's going to cost you ten bucks to fill it up or more. Okay. Is that a twenty-pound bag? Pound it's three bag? three cubic feet, three cubic feet, which will do one of these and have some left over. So a two two bags will do probably three of these. So was that seven dollars a piece, maybe? Two bags, and maybe not, a little more than that. Yes, sir. If you can spend it over a five-year period, it yeah. drops the cost. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and same way with an earth box. Up front, the up front's a little bit steep, but yep. if you're going to garden for the next five years. Yep. And that's the thing, same thing with the earth box. People say these are just too, too expensive, and they are expensive, especially since they've gone up in the last couple of years. But the difference between this lasting five to seven years is what they're projected to last. Now, again, I've, I've gone into my fourth year and I've already had one split with blackberries in it. Not, not, none of my other ones with, I've had tomatoes and stuff in it had. And that's why I think the blackberries may, the swelling of the roots, the, the largeness of the root system in the blackberries probably caused the split, or it could just been a bad place on it. You never know. I mean, just a, a weak place in it. But these, I've had people tell me that they've had them for 20, 25 years and that these things last a long, long time. So if you divide $35, $40 uh, earth box by 20 years, then you start getting down to where it's not that bad. I'm probably not going to make it another 20 years, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 70 years old. And some of you probably think, boy, I thought you'd be younger and thinner. I think that every time I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror and I, think, I thought you was going to be younger. I thought, I thought you'd for sure be thinner than that. But no, I'm not. Yes. My dad is 101. Wow. And he's still gardening. Well, you can, you can buy some then. <laughs> You've just bought a couple of them, right? The, yeah, the earth boxes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the grow back. Uh, what what's uh, do do roots get tangled up in that? And and how what is the longevity of a grow back? I've had some three years at least four. Sometimes they'll get if you pick one up after it's been it's full of dirt and you pick one up and it's been raining hard and it's been in you've had it planted for two or three years. Sometimes a handle will rip off. It's just you don't want to just. Jerk it up. Just just be gentle on it. And there are a lot of different different grow bags. Grow bags. I've got. Uh, I can't remember the name of the one that I like. Uh, everything I buy, uh, the grow bags are off Amazon, and it's uh, Vivasun is one of them. But uh, I think I've got another one that I like better than that. Just go on my YouTube channel and look and, and search grow bags, and I'll probably. Uh, and I would suggest a 10 gallon for a tomato, a 10 gallon bag. Seven would be fine, but, but you know, and you wouldn't have used, it'd be cheaper. You wouldn't have to use quite as much potting mix or dirt, whatever. Um, but I mean, I, I just, the older you get or the older I get, the less I really am interested in pushing a plow. There's things I do. I grow corn and uh, uh, peas and stuff like that. So I do. You know, I do some stuff in the soil, not not abandoning that, but uh, it's it's nice to be able to to walk up to a, a blackberry plant, and instead of instead of picking a blackberry down here, you're picking blackberries up here. Same way with tomatoes, you know, anything that you that you grow. It's nice to have that 20 inch 20 inch buffer there. Uh, a lot of people will put their earth boxes up on haydite blocks or something to get them up too. Keeps the rabbits off your lettuce and stuff, hopefully. Uh, but 
One of the main reasons I went with blackberries, one of the main, uh, main reasons I went with earth boxes uh, or with the wicking tubs is uh, gophers. They just, I had 700 feet of blackberries. I had a little you pick thing going on and, you know, I noticed some of them dying. I thought, well, you know, okay, I guess that's to be expected, whatever. And then every year it just got worse and worse and worse. And I saw all these gopher mounds and I just, I don't know, just idiot, I guess. Didn't think that much about it. And uh, so I have yet to have a gopher pop his head up in that wicking tub. <laughs> have yet. Now, one of them may have tried to chew the side up, and that's, that's why I've got a split in one of them, but I don't think so. So gophers is the main reason I went with blackberries. Gophers, ease of picking. Uh, again, it's not necessarily vegetable gardening, but uh, with blackberries. Gophers, ease of picking. Um, Ease of keeping the, the grass out. I, I used to mulch my blackberries when they were in the soil. I, I'd mulch, mulch my blackberries 16, 18 inches. I mean, I just pile it up on that cane all the way down the road. Seven 100-foot rows, and, uh, which is great. They loved it, but so did the grass. And that, that b b Bermuda and Bahia and everything else just runs toward that mulch because every time it rains, it's just you're, you're making compost tea. Compost tea runs down through there, and that grass says, ooh, I want to be there. And they run, it's, it's not a problem with this. It's just not a problem. And I wouldn't put a cover on uh, blackberries because you do need those canes popping up. Cover on vegetables, yes, but not on blackberries. You need those canes popping up. But the uh, mulch, I think you mentioned mulch a while ago, mulch would be a great uh, it is a great way to do it. Have you ever thought about it, your wicking uh, place, I'm, I'm sorry, your, your overflow place, mm -hmm. catching that and recycle? It looks like a rich black tea. Yeah, if you've got, if you've got a mulch on top, now if you're, you know, if it's just potting mix, then the water just draining down through potting mix and whatever fertilizer you have in there. Well, if you're fertilizing on a regular basis, it's just yeah, pouring out yeah. the lid. That's true. Typically, after you know, after May, you don't get that much rain to have to worry about it. Now, sometimes we do. You know, two or three years ago, we were getting some nice July and August rains. I don't know where they went last year, but um, the reason is that sometimes when you water it, not every tub is going to be as full as true. the other tub. So some are going to overflow yes. before the others get yes. to an overflow. So you always waste. Some. Yep, you do. I'm on a well. I don't worry about it. If I wasn't on a well, I'd worry about it. That's that's it. I mean, really. Yeah. Uh, so the the how much water you need to how much you need to water these is directly commensurate with what's in it. You get a a five foot tomato plant in there with with twenty tomatoes that big around. It's going to take some water. Those tomatoes are nothing but water. About ninety percent water. So you're going to you're going to have to water it in the hot summer nearly every day. I'm maybe three times a week anyway. Now I do a drip irrigation system where I've got my main line running through here and I've got the quarter inch lines popped into those and they come out with a little uh, two gallon per minute uh, emitter in each one of my wicking tubs and uh, uh, earth boxes. So I, I run, I've just taken the, I've tried my best to take the work out of it. If you know, you can stand there with a hose, and I would definitely recommend um, the pipe that you use be there it is be uh, at least an inch, if not an inch and a quarter. I use inch and a quarter on everything simply because the hose goes down in it real good. You don't have to stand there and hope you hit the hole with a, with a, with a hose and you're using a three quarter inch piece of pipe. Get something you know big enough that the nozzle, the end of a hose, will go down in, and, and then just watch the, watch the uh, overflow. And it'll, when it comes up, you start seeing it start coming out of there. Move to the next one. <coughs> what that, I've got prime mark. Well, I've tried a bunch. I, uh, mm -hmm. The University of Arkansas has got the best blackberry program that I know about. They've designed, um, years ago, they designed something called uh, Prime Jim and Prime Jan. I believe that was their first primacane growing blackberries. In other words, it makes blackberries the first year. That cane comes up in the spring and by July, August, something like that, it starts making some berries. Not a bunch of berries, but just leave it alone. Pick, pick a few and enjoy those. But in the, in the spring of next year, that same cane is going to make a bunch of berries. So it's a, it's a, they call it a, they call it a fall crop. I found it to be more ever bearing. It's a, all the Primark, Primark, 
proper, uh, uh, products. I found it to be more of an ever bearing. They start after the after your your uh, floor canes produce, which is the, in all through June typically, and they'll they'll cut off around July. That's when the prima canes start a, a small production. But I mean, I've gotten some inch and inch and a half, two inch long primacane berries off my prime arc freedoms that's what i have now is prime arc freedoms and um uh ponca ponca is not a primacane it's strictly a floor cane bearing plant so you have to wait for the second year uh but i, I grew prime jim and prime jan had vicious thorns on it i'll never have a thorn blackberry i i hate saying never because i've had to eat never too many times but it is my intention to never have another thorn to blackberry on my property. Uh, but Prime Jim and Prime Jan, they just, they were so prolific. I mean, I had, uh, I had 700 feet of blackberries and we got a thousand pounds of blackberries out there oh in, a, in a U pick at $3 a pound. <clears throat> did, did you mention how many blackberries you put in that tub? One. Yeah, and and one in an earth box too. I did grow an, an, uh, a blackberry in an earth box for uh, about two years. I gave it to my neighbor last year, who is a master gardener in Smith County, um, and he he put planted in dirt. He doesn't do a lot of container gardening, but he planted it in the in the soil. And uh, I've got some the orange tubs I was telling you that are so thick and such better tubs. I'm probably fixing to pull all of my Primark freedoms out of my blue tubs put them in the orange tubs because I just think they'll last five years longer than the other ones, than the, than the blue tubs. And I think, as of right now, I think I'm going to take all those punkas. It's supposed to be the sweetest thing Arkansas has ever come out with. It's the sweetest berry that they've ever, ever developed. And it is. It's, you, taste difference between it and the prime is, is, prime arc is, is significant. But I think I'm going to take all of those and put them in earth boxes. I've got so many earth boxes that Typically, it's just me and my wife. I just don't plant, you know, I don't need that many to, to plant. Brother can only have so many tomatoes. You know what? <laughs> I mean, only I disagree. So <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> uh, we do make a lot of hot sauce. But I'm thinking because the, because the other plant did real well in it. It was a Wachita, Q-U-A-C-H. Uh, it did real well in the earth box before I gave it to my neighbor. I'm thinking... Uh, I don't see any reason I can't put the pancas in there. So, and I want to put them, I kind of want to move things and do differently, put them in a different place anyway. So I'm probably going to do that. There'll be videos following all that. If I, I don't, I don't walk outside and do anything without making a video about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So when you're saying you put the blackberries in the earth box, do you use just that size or do you use a bigger one, a taller one? Earth box comes in several sizes but they've got an earth box junior which is smaller they've got an earth box i forget what they call it it's for root for uh potatoes and stuff like that it's taller it's it's small it's it's like square and but taller for root vegetables uh that's all i've ever bought that's just called the original earth box just the original and again i don't buy the all the specialties they've got they've got uh scaffolds and trellises and stuff you can buy everything's real expensive to do that you can buy their fertilizer but it's triple seven just buy you some fertilizer it's gonna be a whole lot cheaper than buying a one pound bag of triple seven from earthbox and shipping it um but yeah it's uh it, it that's the original earthbox it's just it's the one now the that when the when the pancas come out of here they're gonna be round i'm gonna have to trim them off Stick them in here and then put some some soil on the side to you know pack in or whatever. But I I, I really think that's what I'm going to do. I hadn't decided completely, but and that that'll be a good experiment for the longevity longevity of of a blackberry in an earth box too. Again, I know it'll go two years because I, I I raised one for two years and it did did real well. But uh, you know if I could get four five six years out of one, really if it'll go two years, I mean there's no reason it won't go further than that because. By one year, it's root bound. I mean, it's full of roots. I would think. Uh, my experience, it hasn't been. It would, will be. Would be. Yes. So, do you keep them cut, pruned down, pretty short, or do you just let them grow? Blackberries. I prune. I've got a trellis, and I've got a. It's an amazing little trellis that I designed. Got a video on it, of course. Uh, and it's basically two T posts on each end. Maybe it depends on how long your row is. You may want another set of t-posts 
down it every 10 feet or so, but mine's about 50 feet, and I think I've got two, four, six T-posts, and I probably need, sometimes those, that these get hanging on those wires, and I wish I'd have put more T-posts in. And it's, uh, it's basically, have a wire, the, the T-posts are right here, the row of blackberries right here, T-posts sticking up um, 53 inches, I think, something like that. So 30 inches above this, this is typically, I think most of these are 20 inches tall. And I've got a wire at about uh, 18, 16, 18 inches above this for the, for the newer canes that aren't gonna touch your top wires yet. And I've got top wire at about, I wanna say 30 inches, something like that. Somewhere like that, which would be 30 inches above this, which would be 50 inches. You know, above off the ground, but about 30 inches above that. And then as it's coming up, you just kind of train it, you know, just, and, and I've got a little tying tool. Anybody have a little tape tying tool? Oh my gosh, those things are worth their weight in gold. <laughs> and you just take, the cane comes up and it, it's falling over here. You just pick it up to that top wire and you put that thing on it, go boop, and you're done. It's tied for the year. And it's just, oh, I love those things. Link to those things on my, my Amazon page and and I've got a, two videos on it because I just think it's the best thing, sliced bread. Um, but yeah, I, I prune, oh, pruning. I prune at about, I've got my wire at about 30 inches. I prune at about three to four, about four feet. Uh, I've let them go five and six. I've let some that I just missed, I'd prune it, but I, did, I missed the lateral. And I've had laterals get 10, 12 feet long. And I just, oh my gosh, where did I, how did I miss that? But I prune at about three or four feet. Once those blackberries get loaded down with blackberries, they're going to do this. And if you don't have that trellis to catch them, or if a wind comes, uh, it's like a sail, and, and those blackberries are heavy, and you just need, you need a trellis. And the higher you get, you can, you can prune them at six feet, but they're going to fall over probably. So I've, I've found four feet is a good compromise, three to four feet. I usually go four. I get above that top wire, wherever the top wire is, and it, the, if the plant's in the in the middle of this and the wire's coming through here, uh, I I might let the plant get up this tall. So when I lay it over, it's 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 tall enough to reach the wire, you know. So Wait. yes. Okay. So so you got your got your plant row here. And you've got wires on each side of the plant, yes. right? Yes. How far from the plant to the wires? How, my my. How, how the distance between wires? Um. I want to say 20 inches, 16 or 20. Again, the video shows, we, when I went to last year to Bob Wells uh, Nursery up in uh, Mineola, we actually built one. Or he, he had the, I told him, you know, to have the t -post, he had the T-post already done. We just strung the wire, but, uh, but I show uh, how to build it or at least tell how to build it. I think I show, I got one video when I tell it, and then last year I built one for the, for the Pancas, and I believe I went through it. I believe it's 20 inches from T post, and then uh, I, I would I would I would go right now. I've got a, other T posts at about 25 feet, and I could use them at about 10. I mean, it would probably be best if you did 10. And, and one other thing, planting in the ground, the pros and cons of growing uh, blackberries in the ground is you've got to have those those canes. To me, it's the probably the best reason to grow them in containers. Blackberries go down, roots go out, plants come up, you got new blackberries. But it may not be where you wanted a new blackberry. That's your walkway or something. You either got to dig it up, pot it up, and then you've got a new blackberry plant, which is fine. Or you got to mow it down, and it's, after you mow it about twice, it gets the hint, and it's done. Uh, with this, everything's contained, everything stays where it's supposed to stay. They pop up over here, they pop up over here in the middle, they, whatever, but it's all right here. You don't have to worry about what about a blackberry popping up where you don't want it? And, and again, you're sacrificing that plant. If you're not going to dig it up and save it and, and pot it, then you just lost you lost your uh, cane for next year. So I, I don't lose any canes. They all stay in here. They all stay in the container. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the purpose of uh, pruning at the top is so you can reach it really old. Right? Well, it's it's that, but also when you prune it, it starts making, I mean, it's almost immediately, it starts making those laterals. The laterals is where you make most of your berries. You don't make your most of your berries on that, on that cane. You make most of your berries on the laterals that come off that cane. So that's what you want. You want to prune the top, you know. That's why I, that's why I used to go four, five and six feet, had a bunch falling over. 
Plus, I had uh, we had five and six feet. I was I was losing. I think losing some production because if I prune it four feet, I'm getting laterals quicker and I'm getting more laterals. I think. With some of your laterals that are going to your next pot, they haven't seen your video, so they don't know that your pots are in a row. Yeah. Real tight. Uh, can you let those laterals actually run three or four pots down? Sure. Because if, they're not hurting you. Well, anything. the best thing would be to prune the laterals at about 18 inches too. Yeah. 16, 18, Sorry. and just keep chopping. When the lateral comes out and gets 16, 18 inches long, oh, wow. do it, and it will make laterals. Your laterals make laterals, which is, again, where you get more berries. But yeah, I've, I've let them, I've let some slip by me, and they, they go three, three, three tubs down. <laughs> I, I noticed that in my garden, I had some bugs that are always on my tomato plants that I can't get rid of. They're kind of a long little rascal. Hmm. As soon as the tomatoes kind of got too hot, they went right over to the berries. Really? Is it that uh, leaf-footed thrift, thrift or yeah. whatever it's called? Yeah. It's a leaf-footed bug. Yeah. It's like it's a first cousin to a stink bug. Yeah. Yes. I imagine that's yeah. what it was. I call them stink bug. I squashed them until <clears> I was completely <laughs> crazy, but they kept multiplying. Yeah, they do. But I don't know what the... You know, I, squash bugs, I've got a video on squash bugs. You can mix a, a tablespoon of Dawn with a gallon of water and spray it on a squash bug. And he's, he crawls for about five, ten seconds and he goes, he's done. But you don't want to spray it on just everything. I sprayed some on some pepper plants and the pepper plants didn't like that. They didn't die, but they didn't like it. They, they let me know they didn't like it. So mostly the um, uh, cu cucubits, curcubits? Yeah, cucurbits. Cucurbits, see? That's what you get when you're a master gardener. <laughs> Learn how to pronounce stuff. Uh, but those, it works real good on the squash bugs, uh, uh, the, the dawn. Now, stink bugs, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's natural approaches uh, or, or organic, organic approaches to that. Um, Monterey makes some, some things like that. And I try to use it when I can, but boy, if I can't, I'm going to hit it with some seven, you know, or something. I mean, <laughs> just two of them, two two befores. <laughs> I bet it does. After a while, the two four gets a little messy. You got to scrape it off a little bit, but it's pretty satisfying, I would imagine. <laughs> okay, I don't even know how long I've whoo. So I thought it'd be about fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Y'all as hungry as I am, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so Thank you. much. Well, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it.